Good morning, everybody. Um, I want to share a couple of verses with you. I want to share just what the Lord's put on my heart. Um, I'm going to start in uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Uh, we're going to start in uh, verse 1. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings, which twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a coal in his hand, which he had taken from the, with the tongs from the altar, and he laid it on my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom will go for us? Then said I, Hear my, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of the people fat, and make their ears heavy. Shut and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. All right, that, that little section of verses there, I mean, it's it's quite amazing all on its own. Um, so, here's, here's kind of what the Lord put on my heart today. And actually, I, I've been dwelling on this for a couple days. Um, but, as, as a weapon that I've seen that the devil attacks us with, and the devil uses to keep us down, keep us discouraged, because let's be honest, I mean, a lot of times that's the way the enemy is. The enemy comes to us and wants to discourage us, wants to, um, which I've, I've said this several times, but he wants to get us to where we don't work. We don't do what the Lord wants us to do, okay? How can he do that? Well, one of the easiest ways is to get us to where we don't feel worthy to be even sharing. Uh, he takes advantage of that. When we're down, he likes to keep us down. When we have just made a mistake say the Lord asked you to go share the word with somebody else you know and immediately one of the things that comes to your mind is like well Lord I mean I'm you know if the Holy Spirit be in you then you start thinking Lord I, I mean you want me to go talk to that person I mean I feel like they should be talking to me I feel like they should be witnessing to me and all this stuff starts happening in your mind or I know at least it does in mine what is it trying to do a lot of times you'll start thinking, and this is something that we failed as, as pastors and teachers a lot of times, maybe indirectly, but, but we have, is that people have this mentality of, well, I can't go witness to that person. I'm not the pastor. I can't go witness to that person because I'm not the evangelist. All these little ideas, well, I need to bring them to church because church is the best place for them to learn about the Lord. We're not reaching our full potential um, and, and I'm going to give you a little example. We're, we're not reaching our full potential as what the Lord wants us to do. The Lord calls each one of us to be a witness. He calls each one of us to be a light. He calls each one of us to be the salt of the earth. And there are different, um, different forms that he uses us. And we tend to only look at the top four or five, you know, the... The, the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist, the prophet, the teacher, we tend to always think of those. Friends, those, 
those are examples to us. Um, and, and the devil knows this. The devil, what he wants more than anything is to discourage us. To get us to where we feel like we're not able to be used by the Lord. How does he do that? Well, if you take a second and you really talk to somebody, if you really want to know about your spiritual growth, get to know somebody or start studying up on the word depression. Depression, and I can speak this for personal experience, can creep in because you're totally focusing on weaknesses. You're totally focusing on things that you're not able to do. Um, and a lot of people tell us, well, you just need to be a more positive thinker. Now, it's a lot more than just to be all of a sudden a positive thinker. Okay, that That's just a shallow surface to what the problem is. The problem is we need to accept the fact that we do need help. The problem is we need to accept the fact that we do have room to improve. But the greater problem is we still think that it's us and that's pride in us. What, what we need to get to the point and realize, and it comes back to this word, confession of sins. We need to come to the point where we confess that we need help. We don't need to try to talk ourselves out of a lot of them. It's like, well, you just need to be a more positive thinker. No, that's not it. I'm sorry, but I don't feel as a Christian, I don't feel as a person that that's what it is. I need to accept the fact that there are challenges I have in my life. I need to accept the fact that I do have limitations. And you say, well, how can that be right? I mean, everybody else says that we need to focus on the things that we do right. I don't believe that's our solution to our problem in Christ. I think our solution to our problem in Christ is to realize that I need Jesus. I need Jesus' strength in order to do these things. I need to have the creator of all things. I need him to boost me so that through him and him through me, I'm able to accomplish these things. I think that's the problem. A lot of us as Christians, we hit that wall and we sit there with, I don't know if I can do this or not. I'll give you an example. The Lord blessed me one day to uh, put on my heart, I want you to go pray for this person. And I wasn't the only one. There were several other people there. So I went there and I started praying. And this is no, this is boasting on what the Lord and His Holy Spirit does, okay? So I was sitting there and I started praying. And it came out of my mouth because this person needed prayer for you know, they were filled and burdened by a lot of things. They were going through a lot of physical problems. They started, um, we started praying for this person. And I started praying just as normal, Lord Jesus. You know, you come, you help this person, you encourage this person. Can you, whatever it is, I know and I believe that you can take care of this. Well, all of a sudden, the speech coming out of my mouth changed. Okay? It changed. And all of a sudden, I started saying... I need Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, I need you to allow the Lord Jesus to move and rebuke the spirit of fear in this person. I need you to move the spirit of doubt in this person. I need you to move the spirit of illness away from this person. I need you to move these spirits, Jesus, because your blood alone can do these things. And and like I said, it was a boost that came to me to pray these words. I didn't just all of a sudden thank them. I was getting a help. I was getting a direct from the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, it boosted even higher. And the confidence came to me. Speak these words. So I spoke them. In the authority that the Father in heaven has given me through the blood of Jesus move and rebuke these spirits from this person's life so that they can feel the love of Jesus and instantly my body was on fire I mean literally the the the, the and look I don't have to feel this way that this isn't a boasting on I had a I had a moment to where I had 
felt the Lord. This is all about Jesus. This is his blood. It's the only reason this is even able for a person to comprehend it. It boosted me to where I knew instantly I'm the Lord Jesus and I'm going to do this because you've asked. That's what came to me. Like I was so confident in that the Lord Jesus Christ was moving for that person. And then I saw the evidence of it through that person and their smile and their change of their complexion, their change of their, their actual physical face to where they, they, at the first of the day they, they were tired and then now all of a sudden they had a smile and they had a joy that only Jesus could give. You can say, well, that's crazy. You can say, what, well, but I'm telling you, how did it come though? Well, the Lord put on my heart today to share this is an example of how we come to the Lord and accept the fact that I can't change those things. Accept the fact that I am a man of unclean lips, that I'm undone. But that through the purging that only God can do to us, that only he can use his son Jesus' blood through us, then we're able to see his works through faith in him. Look, so many of us, the closer we get, and I see this in my life, and I'm sure a lot of you experience it, just like Isaiah here, we look at, the, we, we feel the Holy Spirit so strong. We feel the drawing towards repentance from our sins. We feel the unworthiness of, Lord, I don't deserve your love. How do you keep loving me? Yet in that instant, we're probably closer to the wisdom of God than we realize. Because, my friends, there's a lot of people that don't even realize they need Jesus. The devil's going to come and say, I oh, see, you don't deserve to do this. He's a whole lot cleaner than you are. You don't deserve to be talking to him. Yet, boldly I go to the throne because Jesus paid the price for me so that I could understand and see these things. A lot of times, the devil comes to us and talks us out of the battle before we ever get in the battle. And the truth is, what we need to do is go by faith. I, mean, I don't have that feeling. You don't have to have that feeling. Go by faith. When you step forth the foot of faith into the water, it just might surprise you that the next thing you're doing is Jesus is saying, come on. Let's go a little further, and you're walking by faith across that water. It's that simple. A lot of times we want to see the proof before we do. It's not how faith works. Faith works is that I do first, believing that the Lord can do this, believing that the Lord's able to change this. It's very interesting to me that the example that Isaiah has right here, he sees the awesomeness of God. He's overwhelmed with God's glory. He sees the angels, which their voices is so powerful. He sees the angels, they're, they're just beautiful creations of God. And you know what? Satan comes to us and tells us, oh man, you just look what a mess you are. My friends, Jesus paid the price on the cross with his blood so that we didn't have to be a mess anymore. The devil hates it because guess what? He can't ever be purged from his sins. He, he is, is dirt itself and can't be clean from it. He can't be purged anymore. He's going to be cast in a lake of fire for all eternity because his sin will never go away. His sins will never be purged. Ours can be, and this is what is shown right here in these verses. Ours can be, but it has to come from the altar and the throne of God. Amazingly, the same place upon that altar and the throne of God is where the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is applied for me and for you. So it's a constant reminder, yes, your sins are gone. What does that mean? God is the one. God Father, through his son Jesus Christ's blood, is what makes us worthy. What does he turn around and do? The same tool that the man confesses, man, I'm a mess and I don't need to be here. And I'm surrounded by people that are a mess. What does God do? God uses that same, that's exactly where the purging starts, is right there in his mouth. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to get you purged. And then I'm just going to ask a question. Who wants to go talk about me? Who wants to go tell people that I'm alive 
Who wants to go tell people? This is what God's saying in these verses. Who's the one that's going to go share my gospel? Isaiah, all of a sudden, is transferred from someone who says, there's no way I could ever, even I don't even deserve to be in your presence. All of a sudden, he has the confidence, Lord, then with your help, I can go share. I can go teach them. I can go tell people about Jesus. I can go tell people about God. And this is all God's looking for. God is looking for people who want to be willing, usable vessels. And you're like, yeah, but I'm a mess. Guess what? He's going to fix you. That's, that's probably the one of the biggest things in, in just in the world you see is people constantly, man, that church will fall down if I walk through it. Why? Why is it going to fall down? Eh, well, you don't know the things you've done. I got news for you. The people that go there every Sunday and Wednesday aren't any cleaner than you are. I'm telling you personally, I am no better than you are. I can, I, I would just about willing to challenge to say where it's not going to compete on who sins greater. But every sin that I've committed in my life is deserving of the lake of fire as much as any sin that you've created in your life. Ah, but you don't understand. I've done some really bad things. That's what you don't understand. What you don't understand is that, guess what? We've all come short of the glory of God. There's no man that stood up other than Jesus in the book of Revelation and is worthy of reading the book that brings the great tribulation. None. Not one. Well, you mean I can be used to? Yes, you can be used to. I'm telling you from personal experience. One of the biggest challenges that I've, I've had, and here recently I'm ashamed to say that one I, I got into a big just had a bad day, too many things going around. It wasn't a horrible word, but a word came out of my mouth that shouldn't have come out. One of my greatest fears 10 years ago when the Lord came to my life and started using me to witness and using me to preach and teach, I wasn't in a public place. I was just in my car. I was I was complaining. I was going on and on and on. And, and it, it slipped out and happened. You said, well, I can't believe it. And I said, well, guess what? I'm an unclean man in an unclean world. My mouth gets the best of me a lot of times. Yet it's amazing how Jesus used that same mouth to tell somebody Jesus loves you at times. Was it wrong? Yes. And I confessed and I've stopped and I haven't. That's the only one I've said in years. But guess what, guys? My mouth used to say things that, what do they say the sailor would be ashamed of? That we all should be ashamed of. Does that mean that God can't clean us up and use us? God can, clean, God can clean, clean us up and use us. He used the example of the devil even tried to use it against me again. I mean, you don't understand, Lord. I mean, I've said a word that I shouldn't have said. I can't believe I lost control. And then the Lord Jesus reminded me. You know, I had a disciple one time that denied me three times, and he used a curse word too. Guess what? I asked him if he loved me. He said, yes, he loved me. And then you know what I told him? Then go feed my sheep broke down in tears crying I did that same man Peter broke down in tears crying why you mean you're gonna you mean you you're gonna keep using me yeah I paid the price on the cross with my blood that sin's gone let's keep going forward I got more people I want to talk to I got more people I want to bring to my father's house Friends, look, Jesus loves us more than we have any idea. No, we don't need to run to sin. No, we don't need to cuss like a sailor Monday through Friday and Sunday show up, ready to preach a message, sing a song, bless somebody. That's not how it works. We need to fight the flesh. We need to fight these things. But guess what? Accept your weakness. I can't do this on my own. I need the Lord Jesus. You'll be amazed at how different your life will become when you stop fighting and you start giving the fight to the Lord. There's nobody that can fight Satan better than Jesus can. Satan isn't even a challenge to Jesus. Do you realize that? Satan wants us to believe that he's a challenge and he's his big opponent that they're fighting head to head. No, that's not how it is. Lord Jesus created Satan. How do you know? Because it says he created all things. All things. That includes Satan himself. He designed him. He knows exactly how he thinks. 
He knows that he has complete control. Don't believe me? Read the book of Job. Read the book of Job. The devil admits, I can't go to him because you have a hedge around him. I can't touch that man because you've got him surrounded. Guess what, guys? Jesus is still just as powerful. Jesus said himself, can't tempt the Lord your God. Not possible. Jesus didn't even go wrestle Satan. <laughs> that was Michael that was fighting Satan. Not Jesus. Jesus, all he has to do is speak to him. And he's going to be wrapped up in a chain and gone. A lot of times, and this is what the Lord's been teaching me. A lot of times, the Lord wants us to go be a witness. Holy Spirit's encouraging us to go preach and share and we get stuck on, Lord, I'm just not feeling it today. Lord, I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't have that. I don't have that feeling. I don't have that, you know. Guys, a lot of times, we're not letting faith kick in. You just never know. You just might get that draw of faith after you take that first step. You'll never know till you do You'll never know till you take that first step, am I going to be able to walk on water with Jesus or not? You know what? I'm going to go for it and see what happens. I'm going to put my foot out. All right, Lord, here I go. You ever looked at a little baby when he first starts walking? <laughs> little babies, they're something else. We can learn a lot more from them. From them. Little baby gets all excited, sees mommy, sees daddy, holds those arms up, wants to step forward, stumbles a little bit, reaches up again, ain't nothing better than that little baby when it does take a step or two and mommy and daddy start clapping their hands, start talking about how Look at you, look at you, good job. Come on, come on, come on, just a little bit further. Where do you think we get that thought from? We're created in the image of God. We got a lot of stuff in the world going on right now. People not happy with the way they look. People not happy with what they were born as. People not happy with so many different things. God wants us to be happy. God knows we have imperfections. Our imperfection, look, let me, let me give you a big news flash. It's not superficial, guys. Our biggest imperfection that we really need to work on is in our hearts, and it's called sin. We have trouble. We all are stumbling. Jesus wants to give us strength. Jesus wants us to be able to make those little baby steps. Jesus wants us to be eventually be able to walk on our own and go on and move for the Lord. He knows our struggle. But when we start walking and we start depending on Jesus and we start realizing that, hey man, he's right there. I think I can do this with him right there with me. Let's go. Let's try this again. I think when we start doing that, it's just like that parent that sees that little kid growing. You know how exciting it is for a parent to see a kid walk, see a kid ride a bike, see a kid succeed in whatever goal they're after I can't describe it it's so exciting it's a joy that I can't explain where do you think to get that joy from you don't think the father looks at his son at his right hand and says see son that's why we approached you that's why I allowed you remember when you asked me on the cross why have you forsaken me son this is why Look how many little kids are walking towards us now. Look how many kids are standing on their own. Look how many kids that the imperfection of sin had them down, discouraged, disappointed, going towards the lake of fire. And now because of you, my son Jesus, that have done this on the cross, that was willing to give your life for them and your blood, look how many are walking now. Look how many are running to us. Look how many are helping others. Look how many are encouraging others. He wants you 
to be one of those kids. You know, I wasn't going to share this, but it keeps coming to mind. You might have to give me just a second. Here recently, my brother's life on this world was, was over. The younger brother had about eight years difference between us. And I remember when he was born. I was tickled. Finally, I wasn't the only boy in the house other than my dad, of course. And, uh, over the years, there's so many little things, so many little stories me and him go back and forth. Our dad his time was over when I was about 15 and my brother was, I can't remember, he, he was probably nine years old, eight or nine years old. And uh, you know, I, I, I'd get so excited when my brother would do different things. I went off to college for a while, came back, he was a little taller, had his hair a little different. I remember when he got his, uh, license. He was all excited. I remember when he bought his first car. I remember the excitement on his face with me and him. I would. I remember going home one day and I worked third shift at the time. And he loved fishing just as much as me and I got him up and I said, man, we got to go to the creek. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah, come on, get out of bed. I'm going to take you to the creek. Me and him, we caught so many little fish at that creek that morning. He's like, my goodness. He said, how did you know? And I said, well, I went out this morning and I fished. And I caught a bunch. I said, but I knew you would have just as much blast. So I came home, grabbed you, take you back so that you could have a blast today too. And he's like, man, he wound up catching one of the biggest he'd, fish he'd ever caught just out in a little creek. And, uh, but there's joy on his face, the joy seeing him go through these accomplishments, you know, that's what it's about. That's what we're supposed to be doing. When it says in the Bible it's supposed to love one another, love our brothers, love our sisters, we should be will wanting and willing to help them in whatever we can. We should be willing to encourage them to keep doing things they need to be doing that's right. That joy of helping a brother or sister, we should do that to our fellow Christian brothers and sisters. And I know a lot of people don't agree with me in this, but you know what? Technically, we were all born from Adam. Technically, the ones that are unsaved, there are fleshly brothers and sisters. Even if they're not doing the right things, we still should love them. We still should treat them with kindness. We still should try to help. We should witness to them. Why? Because I don't want to see any soul go to that lake of fire. Hey, but you don't understand what they've done. No, you don't understand what I've done. <laughs> and yet the Lord comes to me and helps me. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be witnessing. It says right there that, that you know, Isaiah asked him, said, how, how long? How long am I supposed to do this? He said, look to him. I want you to make these people's heavy, hearts heavy. I want you to tell them the truth. In Ezekiel 3, it talks about, well, you know, a lot of times we're not sharing the word of God. A lot of times, how are these people going to hear? You think, you, you think nowadays, you know, when I was a kid, you, you always heard, oh, yeah, but... You know, that pastor over there, boy, he can really preach. We need to get him to that church. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you woke up, but the uh, world we live in now, I can't guarantee you that every pastor is going to tell people the truth about Jesus. I, I can't guarantee you that, that, that they're actually going to speak the truth that the Bible says. There's a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers, a lot of evangelists that Lord forgive them, I'm not accusing, but they're not preaching the truth. A lot of these people we depend on, oh, well, they go to church, they'll, they'll understand it. Not saying we're better, I'm just saying that if the Lord lays something on your heart to go share, then go share it. He's trying to reach those souls, and if you don't share it and you know the truth, you will be held accountable one day by God above. You know? So, all of this together is I'm going to challenge you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Admit your weakness, confess your sin, and go to Jesus and watch how he's using you, how he can use you for even more. I'm very thankful for the Lord Jesus. 
what he's done in my life. I'm very thankful that, that he's blessed me the way that he's blessed me. The Lord Jesus is amazing. And he wants to help us and he wants to use us. Hope he uses this to encourage you. We're just people. Don't look at their titles. Don't look at what their 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 job is in the Lord. The Lord can use any of us. But it has to start with we see that we have unclean lips. We see that we're in a world of unclean lips. Lord Jesus, I need your help. That's where it starts. And then the Lord can take it from there. So take the weapon that the devil is trying to use against us to discourage us. Turn it back around on him. And you know what? I did do all those things. I do admit I did make all this mess. But you know what? Jesus' blood washed all this away. So I'm going to go talk to those people. I'm going to go tell people about Jesus. Anyway, this has blessed me. I hope it blessed you. Just keep praying for me. Lord Jesus, bless you all. His blood being upon all of us. That's the only thing that's going to wash away all of our sins. Y'all have a wonderful day.